Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Hanley and I'm here to present my hymn devotional paper. My hymn was Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, Holy, Holy was written by Reginald Heber and has been called one of the world's greatest hymns. The great English theologian Eric Routley called it a complete theology of the Trinity. The hymn clearly points to the beauty and wonder of the Trinitarian Godhead. The last line of the first and fourth verses state this plainly, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Textually, it uses a series of threes which emphasize the Trinity even more so. We see this throughout the hymn, which we see in rhythmic patterns using words like Lord God Almighty in earth and sky and sea. It even carries this theme forward musically by using a simple triad D, F sharp, and A to begin each verse. Again, even this purposely points to the doctrine of the Trinity that the hymn clearly highlights throughout its text. Not only does it highlight the majesty of the Trinity, but points to the deserving worshipful response of creation given to God. Phrases in the hymn that communicate this are, Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee, and all the saints adore thee. Many have said that this is one of the best hymns ever written because it simply yet profoundly communicates this theological, beautiful truth of the Trinity and can be sung throughout the Christian calendar year. To give a scriptural analysis, the hymn Holy, Holy, Holy is mostly pulled from two scriptural texts. The first is Isaiah 6 and the other is Revelation chapter 4 through 5. Stanza 1 is pulled mostly from Isaiah 6, 3 and Revelation 4, 8. Both of these scriptural texts say and declare the holiness of God by emphasizing it three times. At the beginning of each stanza, Heber declares that God is the most holy. Stanza 2 introduces three types of creatures that worship holy God, saints, cherubim, and seraphim. These are referenced in Isaiah 6, 2 through 3, and Revelation 4, 6 through 10. Stanza 3 uses Isaiah 6, 3 through 4, and Revelation 4, 11, and Revelation 15, 4, to say that only God is holy and worthy of worship. Finally, stanza 4 is similar to the first, but the second line is different. It says, All thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. This line in the hymn is pulled from Revelation 5, 13. To give some background, Holy, Holy, Holy was written by Reginald Heber in the 19th century. The hymn writer was born in England into a minister's family. He was educated at Oxford University and was an excellent poet. After graduation, he became a pastor at his father's parish, where he faithfully served for 16 years. Reginald loved Christian missions, and we can see this from another one of his hymns that he wrote from Greenland's Icy Mountains, which expresses taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. After serving as a pastor, he began his missionary journey by moving to India to preach the good news. Around two years into his journey, he was preaching to a large crowd uh, one extremely hot afternoon, and he died of a stroke. Shortly after, his widow found a trunk with 57 hymns that he had written in accordance to the church calendar. She published all of them, and among them was the beautiful Trinitarian hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. To give a hymn explication, this is stanza one. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. The first stanza clearly proclaims who God is. He is holy, he is merciful, he is holy, mighty. We also see a clear declaration of the Trinity. God is one, but exists in three persons. Our response to the Holy Trinity is to worship. The second stanza says, Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who works and art and evermore shall be. Stanza 2 takes us right to Revelation 4 and 5. Heber takes these scriptures and arranges them lyrically. He is highlighting the scriptural picture of both angelic beings and the saints bowing down before holy God and declaring that he alone is worthy of worship. They worship the one who was and is and will be forever. The third stanza says, Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eyes of sinful man thy glory may not see. 
Only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. The first two lines of the stanza tell us that sin has deceived and distorted our view of God. Our hearts have worshipped other things when the only one who is worthy of worship is God. The last two lines of the stanza elaborate on this more. Only God is holy. He is, trans, he is transcendent, and there is none like our God. He is perfect in every aspect of his being. The final stanza says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Similar to the first stanza, stanza four is a declaration of God's holiness and a proclamation of who he is. The only line that is different, which I've mentioned already, is the second, and it can be read incorrectly at a glance. For instance, it can be read, all my works will praise your name. We must note, however, that thy is capitalized, indicating that it should be read, all your works shall praise your name. This is a subtle change, but completely changes the meaning of the line. When we read it like so, it would indicate that all the works of God in God's hand are first and foremost for his glory and no other. All creation is created by God and for God, earth, sky, and sea. To dive into the musical aspects of the tune, in 1861, a publisher brought Heber's Holy, Holy, Holy to John B. Dykes to compose a tune for the hymn. Within 30 minutes of receiving the text, he wrote the musical tune Nicaea. This was named after the Nicene Creed which was an early church creed that affirmed the doctrine of the Trinity. This tune has been used mostly exclusively for Heber's hymn. Almost every hymnal includes this tune in the key of D and follows a 11, 12, 12, 10 meter. It is noted to bring down the volume in the third stanza to emphasize our confession of sin among a holy God. So, Connecting this to the congregation, we see that through this hymn, it is incredibly rich with theology and biblical doctrine, and the language is yet simple. One challenge that could trip up a congregation are the use of the cherubim and the seraphim. Those are two things we don't typically sing um, about. We don't discuss them a lot in our current culture. I think the solution to this would be to read Isaiah 6 and Revelation 4 and teach the congregation so they know what they are singing. <clears throat> Another issue that I've already mentioned is the use of thy in the second line of stanza four. We need to make sure we intentionally explain this and we don't misinterpret what the author is saying. The capitalization of thy indicates clearly for us that Heber is not saying that our works shall praise his name, but that God's works will bring glory to his name. This requires simple but yet intentional teaching towards learning this hymn. <clears throat> So how can this be him be used in a ministry context? Liturgically, it gives us a clear language to sing about how our, the Holy Trinitarian God. Not many hymn texts allow the congregate to sing about the Trinity. Though Holy, Holy, Holy does not use the names Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it clearly and strongly emphasizes a Trinitarian doctrine. In addition to this, this hymn is so scriptural. When this tune is sung, the congregation is singing scriptural texts from the book of Isaiah and the book of Revelation, as we've already noted a bunch. Outside of corporate worship, this hymn teaches us clear and biblical theology. This text teaches us that God alone is holy and we are not. How can one stand in the presence of a God who is holy, holy, holy? We are sinful, unrighteous, spiritually dead. God is transcendent, mighty, and perfect. But God is merciful and loving. He cares for us and invites us into relationship with him forever. Through Christ the Son, our hearts are awakened to worship him alone. So what I'd like to do now is just pray to close our time a, a, a prayer of devotion in regards of what we just read. Holy, 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 Lord God, there is none like you. You are above all the heavens are shouting your praises right now. All creation will bring you alone the glory that is due to your name. I confess that I have sinned and worshipped the creation rather than the creator. My sin has blinded me from your glory. 
But God, you are merciful. I have sinned against you, yet you have pardoned me because of your love for me. Jesus, you have paid for my punishment on the cross, and because of your mercy, I'm no longer blind, but now I have sight to see that only you are holy, and there is none beside you. Lord, let my life be an offering of worship to you. Fill me up, Holy Spirit, so that I may worship you alone. Join with creation and with heaven and my life allow to bow before you to the one who is worthy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. Thank you, guys.